I want to welcome you all to our first ever surface design symposium that we're hosting with the Craft Industry Alliance. This is our first class of the day. Uh, it's all about how to create a seamless repeat in Illustrator. And I am thrilled to introduce you to your teacher, Esther Niryoshi. She is a surface designer, illustrator, top teacher on Skillshare, and she is just amazing. And I'm so excited for her to get started. Um, if you all have any technical questions, just keep it in the chat and put a, a capital Q just so we can keep track of the, the technical questions as she is going. But I want to remind you all that we're recording this and you can watch it back again and again. So don't fear. Um, Esther, with that. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, it's so good to chat with everyone. Um, I heard that people are tuning in from all over the world. That's wonderful. And let's get started. So um, if you get a chance to download, the, if you haven't already, this is um, our practice file. You can follow along with the exact image and steps and all the assets. But if you want to do your own doodle, that's also perfectly fine. Um, so we're, we're going in to digitize our doodle as our first step. So in the middle of, the, um, of our canvas, we have um, basically a picture that I took from um, just a few brush strokes that I made um, a few days ago. So you can just take a picture against um, a white background and then upload it to your Illustrator. Um, now we're going to basically translate our picture into vector graphics so that we can do all the magic within the program. So um, if you are using a different graphic, um, your own doodle, you wanna make sure you embed your image. Um, to do that, it is on the um, upper left-hand corner. You can click on embed. Um, I already did that, so um, we can get started. Um, the first step we want to do is to do translation. We want to translate this image into vector graphics. To do that, we're going to use a function that is called image trace. And you can come over to window. And in the drop down menu, somewhere in the middle, it says image trace. This will give you a dialog that looks like this. Sometimes it grays out. All you need to do is to just click outside and click click um, on your image again, and you will see all the fun little sliders. Um, the image I have right here is black and white, and that's the result I want to have. It's just one color. But if you have an um, intricate watercolor, you can click on the mode. Over here, there's a drop down menu, and you can click on color. So. For those who are following along with the practice file, we're just going to do black and white. Um, down the list, there is an ignore white. So we're, we want to check that. The reason why is that um, we want to ignore all the white pixels so Illustrator doesn't think the rectangle is also part of the shape. And then we want to turn on the preview so we, so we can um, see the live result. So by default, this is the result we have. It's not too bad. It's a simplified version of the drawing that we have. I'm going to fine tune it a little bit by playing with the threshold. So I'm going to, if you slide it all the way to the left, it's going to lower the threshold. In this case, I'm going to turn it up a little bit. And then I want to um, play with the past as well. Um, in this case, I'm going to turn it on the higher side and I'm going to lower the corner count. Um, and also I will lower the noise as well. Um, I will increase the noise. So if you don't know what these sliders mean, um, when you hover over Illustrator, give you a brief explanation. So basically just play with, um, play with it and see if you like the result. Once you're happy with what, what you're seeing, you can go ahead and um, expand this. Um, the expand button is right above, somewhere in the middle, and go ahead and click on expand. 
And now um, we have translated our image into vector graphics. So I'm going to close this. By default, um, everything that's been vectorized or digitized um, is grouped in one big group. Um, when we make pattern, we want to be able to manipulate these two pieces independently. So we're going to ungroup it a few times and then group them based on um, the shape. So I'm going to right click and ungroup, or you can do Command Shift G to ungroup it a few times. If you're on a PC, you can do Control Shift G. And then now we want to use the selection tool, which is V on your keyboard. And then we want to just click and drag to select this entire piece and then group it by pressing Command G and do the same for the other part. In your swatches panel on the right, um, you should have a bunch of colors that I have already um, put in there. So you can select your, um, your shape or doodles and you can click on different colors to change colors. Um, by the way, the layout that I'm using is um, the default painting. You can find that by, click on, by clicking on the upper right hand corner and just click on painting. So then your layout should look something like mine. Either any, either any questions, Tara? Feel free to just interrupt. And um, I, I would love to bring everybody, as many people along as possible. Yeah, um, so far there's been a few. Becca Ron, thank you so much for responding some, to some of these questions. Um, there's one from uh, Crystal Boone. Um, she's saying, why would you not want to keep your image as a PNG and then make the pattern? Um, the PNG we have um, is a vac uh, is a raster file. Um, the raster file is it treats all the shapes. Um, for example, so this is my drawing. A PNG file sees everything as one shape. It does not allow us to manipulate these individually as a vector graphic. Um, the reason why I really love Illustrator is that everything is vector. For example, if I just zoom in super, super close, you can still see things are really, really sharp. There's no pixelation. So we want to translate a um, giant PN, um, ping or JPEG file into vector file so that um, we can export our um, our graphics in whatever resolution and we will not lose the sharpness. Um, so there's just one more thing. It looks like some people are having a hard time downloading. Oh, um, I think you might need to just, um, if you're on Chrome, you might need to just um, trust a website. It is my own server that um, my husband set up. So it, it's trustworthy. You just need to trust it and then download it there. And it's also not needed for this class. It's just, you know, mm -hmm. so yeah, a hundred percent. Yep. Don't worry about it. Yep. Okay, great. Okay. So I'm going to move on to the next step. So we're going to touch on some simple drawing techniques. I'm just going to copy and paste command C command V over here. So Illustrator gives us a lot of ability in drawing natively. So I'm just going to um, demonstrate how to draw a circle over here. Um, for example, you can click on your L key on your keyboard. That will take you to the um, ellipse tool. When you long click, you will discover other shapes that you can use. Um, so basically, a lot of the geometric shape or even a lot of the hand-drawn shapes are made of these building blocks. I'm just going to show you a quick example by using the ellipse tool. So to draw a circle, you can just click and drag. This will give you oval. You can change your ratio however you want. If you hold your shift key, that will give you a perfect circle. So I'm going to just do that. And I will hit I for eyedropper to sample the color. So this circle looks very perfect. If that's what you want, great. Um, I, like, I like it to 
be a little more organic. So I'm going to do a bit of um, kind of Play-Doh, what I call. So what I'm going to do is to use the warp tool. The, uh, the keyboard shortcut is shift R. That will take you to this looking, this odd looking shape. Um, so I'm just going to like how we play with the Play-Doh. I'm just going to um, click and drag to push the boundary a little bit to make my shape looks um, to make my shape look more organic. So look like hand drawn. So I'm gonna um, put it behind. Why? Well, actually, I'll put it aside for now. Um, if you want to draw freehand, um, you can use blob brush tool. Um, the keyboard shortcut is Shift B. It is usually um, hidden under um, the paintbrush tool. So if you see your paintbrush tool and then you can just long press, you will see this blob brush tool. Um, if your panel doesn't show all the tools that's needed, you can always click on the three dots here and click on the hamburger menu to select the advanced. When you do that, you should be able to see all the tools. So I'm just going to draw a tiny stem on each side of my flower. I can move this down a bit. So I'm going to draw some pretty symbolic petals over here. As you can see, um, my line, my actual lines are not super smooth, but um, I actually set this up as um, kind of autocorrect. If you double, if you double click your blob brush tool, you can change the smooth value. So I usually leave it um, somewhere in the middle or a little more smooth, depending on um, how polished I want it to look. So just go ahead and draw this. I'm just using my mouse right now. Um, if you have a tablet, that would be even better. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my color block underneath to send it all the way back. Right now it's sitting on top of my flower. To send it all the way back, you can right click and arrange and send to back. Or the keyboard shortcut is Command Shift um, Left Bracket. If you want to make a duplicate, you can hold your Option key. You see the cursor become double the uh, double arrow, and you can just drag it across. If you want to rotate a little bit to just to give it some change, you can um, press E on your keyboard, and then just rotate it this way. Maybe I'll give it a different color as well. I'll sample this, this little one right here. Um, you can also just draw um, the flower like this um, just by using the um, blob brush tool by Shift B. This one is really charming because it looks like you have someone have, have done that with just um, color pencil or something. It has a lot of character than the perfect petal. So I'm just going to freehand and draw my little flower. I'll sample this purple. I'm pressing I on my keyboard. Oops. You want to make sure you have the petal selected and then press I to sample a color. And then Coming back to the blob brush tool for the middle part. So we're going to build a pattern based on these three big motifs. I'm going to just change the scale a little bit before, um, before we start building. To rescale it, um, you can select it and press E for free transform and hold your shift key so that you lock your ratio. 
I'm going to do this. And before we move on, I want to group this as a group. So you can select it and command G. Same thing, command G, and for this one. So now I'm going to, um, you, if you haven't saved your file already, go ahead and save it. It's always a good habit to save your file. So I'm going to select all of them and press command C and bring it to the next slide. Okay, so now we're ready to build a pattern. Before we do that, let's talk about what is a pattern. So if we look at a wallpaper or someone's beautiful dress, it has um, some repeating element, right? If we look at this very simple um, um, geometric pattern, we see the circles, every element is um, repeated. Um, if we can just select each little rectangle and pick it apart, each one of these is called a um, repeating pattern. So it's a building block, kind of like Lego for our pattern. So our goal as a pattern designer is to build um, a beautiful repeating pattern and tell Illustrator to repeat this um, from left to right and from top to down. So let me just turn on my notes for a moment. So this is what we talked about. Um, what we see in the middle is a repeating pattern is a repeating unit. If we bring this um, middle block to the right, let's just, this is entirely um, hypothetical number. Um, you can set it as your own, as long as it's a triangle, uh, as long as it's a rectangle. So this one particular block, we have 280 pixels by 240 pixels. So what makes it unique is that you see the edge, whatever elements that touches the left edge will be repeated on the right as well with the 280 pixels in between. And whatever that touches the top boundary will be, rep will be repeated to the bottom as well. Whatever that's in the middle, it's kind of um, not super consequential. So they can float over here. Do we have any questions so far? Okay, I'll just- We're good, yeah. Keep okay, going. awesome. <laughs> All right. Um, let me just turn this back on. So, so that's, how, um, that's how we build a pattern. So if we look at our pattern um, kind of at, as a bird's eye view, we have a few layers. On the very top, we have the motifs, which is also your art. It can be as simple as what I have here, just very basic geometric shapes, or it can be like very intricate florals, um, whatever you want to build. Um, it could be lettering, whatever you want to build a repeating pattern out of. So that's at the very top. And right underneath it, we have the background layer. Um, for example, um, the pattern that we saw just a minute ago, this one has a background color. So that's where this one come from. At the very bottom, we have our pattern definition. So right now I have um, a stroke color that so that um, you can see, but in reality, this layer should be no stroke, no fill. If we think about, um, so, the job of this layer is to tell Illustrator whatever that's above will be repeated. That tells us the boundary of the repeating unit. If we think of this as a sandbox, um, just to help us remember, this background layer is kind of like a layer of sand. And then like on top of the sand, we have all kinds of toys. Whatever that falls inside the sandbox we can tell Illustrator, this is going to be a repeating pattern. I hope this makes sense. Um, let's, let's practice so, um, so we, can, we can kind of solidify that information. So over here, well, let me just grab what we have just worked on. 
and then come over to assembly and then paste command V. So now we have three um, motifs that we're gonna build a pattern out of. On the left is our reference. So the imagery we just talked about, the sandbox metaphor, as well as, well as the, um, the repeating pattern unit, how we build it. So what I'm gonna do is to start with the sandbox. I'm gonna build a um, rectangle. You can press M on your keyboard. That will take you to the rectangle tool. Um, if you just click on the, you can click and drag, that will give you a rectangle. But the problem with, with that is that sometimes, um, if we look at the size, sometimes it gives you a, a number that is not so, so pretty. So, so I like to start with um, a definitive number. For example, um, with the rectangle selected, I'm gonna click on my canvas and then just define it. It can be big or small, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm using pixel for my unit. So I'm gonna do 350 pixels by say two, 420 pixels. This is entirely um, subjective. Your pattern, as long as it's a rectangle, um, you're all good. So I'm gonna turn this um, into a lighter color and then start building from here. So right now it's sitting on top of my motif. I'm gonna send this all the way back by pressing Command Shift Left Bracket, or you can do right click and arrange and send to back. In that way, we will be able to see all the motif on top. If you wanna rotate, um, you can press R on your keyboard or you can do E on your keyboard. That will let you see the, the bounding box. Sometimes it's easier to see with the bounding box. Whenever you wanna flip um, an item, you can press O on your keyboard. That will give you a mirror image of your motif. So I'm, I'm gonna make a tossed print. Um, so it's not very directional. So when you hold a piece of fabric, you can make a dress However, um, you can cut the fabric however you want. It doesn't have a direction. Um, so, okay. So coming back to our um, repeating unit, remember we talked about whatever that touches the left will be repeated to the right and whatever touches the top will be repeated to the bottom. I'm just gonna um, write down the dimension we just create so that I can keep in mind. Okay, there you go. So for this guy, we want to repeat it all the way to the right as well. And we wanna right click and transform and move. Make sure you have the preview turned on so that you can see the movement. To get started, we wanna reset our horizontal and vertical and the distance. So it's at its original position. And then I'm, I'm gonna move it horizontally to the right. So plus 350 pixels. As you can see, it moves to the right. Instead of clicking OK, we want to click Copy so that we're making one additional copy to the right. It's start to touch this flower in the middle. We'll fix it that. We'll fix that. No worries. And then we want to right click on this one, transform, and move. 
Illustrator is going to remember the movement that you last made. So we want to reset this one and we want to move it vertically by 420 pixels and then click on copy. So right now we're done with the repeating portion. Whatever that touches the left gets repeated to the right. Whatever touches the top gets repeated down as well. And then we just need to um, maybe rotate this guy and maybe make it a little smaller so that it's giving enough white space um, around it. So if we look at the reference image, we have our um, we have our motifs repeated. We have our background, which is the dimension we just made. Now we just need to tell Illustrator we want to make a pattern out of this. So now we're gonna make a no stroke, no fill rectangle underneath this background color. Um, so I'm gonna press Command C or Control C on your PC and then command B, which means that I paste it in the back at the exact position. It's important that you don't shift, you don't accidentally shift your position. Um, so if I make an exact copy right now, um, it is, um, ha ha it has the background color. We just wanna um, get rid of the background color by clicking on this none button or backslash. So if we select everything, all the layers, and then just drag it to our swatch panel, we have a pattern. Let me just drag this whole thing to the side to test it. So I'm gonna make um, maybe a rectangle, a bigger rectangle and then select the brush, uh, select the swatch that we just made. Voila, we have a pattern. It looks a little bit too big. So I'm gonna um, turn the preview a tiny bit smaller by right clicking, transform and scale. And then it automatically scales the whole thing. Um, I wanna uncheck the transform objects. So, this is a pattern. Yep, um, we definitely need to tweak this pattern because we see a lot of white space. Um, so we can do that by moving stuff around or you can add additional element. Um, but basically that's the process of how to make a pattern. Um, so I'm gonna move this around. Oh, uh, one more tip. If you're making, um, if you're moving the border elements around, it's, it will be best if you can select its um, tween on the other side so that when you are moving, you're not changing the distance. So you don't have to make the copy thing again. Just a little trick. Maybe we'll make another one right here. Um, and then you can select it. You can select this one and then drag it to the swatch to make a new pattern. So this is our this is our new pattern. Do we have any questions so far? Um, Becca had a question about um... Why why do you need the blank rectangle in the back? Does the swatch palette use that to define the swatch? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's exactly. Hello, thank you, Phil. I just saw that you responded. It's so hard to keep up with these chats. I really appreciate you all community answering these uh, questions as they come up. Everybody loved your uh, your sandbox uh, metaphor. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm so happy. Yeah, so my mind is um, needs some metaphor to help me understand. So the sandbox is what really clicked for me. Um, so I'm glad um, it's working for you too. So Sherry is saying that hers did not work, that there's white spaces between each of her repeats. Is there like a troubleshooting? Yep. Um, 
So what you need um, is probably you want to make sure your no stroke, no fill is at the very end. Otherwise, um, let's say, so this one have all the three elements. We have the top motif, background color. We have the no stroke, no fill to tell Illustrator to um, this is a pattern. Let's pretend if we, let me just um, take my no stroke, no fill out. Um, if we don't have it, or we have the no stroke, no fill at the in between or top layer, as long as it's not at the bottom, Illustrator is going to take this bigger boundary as your repeating pattern. That's when the, the gaps come in. For example, if you um, don't have the no stroke, no fill, the sandbox layer at the very bottom, if you just drag this guy, you're going to have a, a gap. For example, I'm going to just make a rectangle and click on. Um, well, you know, oh, I, I see what happened. I locked my layer by accident. So there you go. Okay. And now we, um, oh, I guess maybe Illustrator becomes smarter. So yeah, I would recommend just make sure the um, the no stroke, no fill is at the very end. If it's on, on the top, um, it, it's gonna give you the gap. I don't know why uh, my Illustrator is keep doing the right thing, <laughs> even I did it wrong. But normally if I forget to, send it to the back, it's gonna, it's gonna give me issue with the gap. Well, my illustrator is self-correcting today. Oh, well. Doo -doo -doo. So um, let's see, fun with colors. Let's just um, say that you have created a pattern that you really love. Um, this is what we had before. And say that mm, maybe I want to create a second or third colorway to kind of go together with it. Um, to do that, there is a real fun trick that you can use. Um, let me just hold down the Option key and Shift to make a copy. And you want to click on the color wheel, which is recolor artwork. And then this will take you to um, color workspace. If you um, if you know if you want to just like freehand your color, you can do that. Um, maybe you can unlink by clicking this link to kind of freehand the different colors. But um, I like to predefine my colors and then. Um, and save them as um, little groups on my swatches panel. And then click on the advanced options. And then this will give me a different alternative. For example, if I want to um, use this color group. Okay, if I want to use this one, you can do that. Um, say that you like the composition, uh, you like the combination, but um, not so sure about the placement, you can click on this button right here. It's called randomly change color order. This will still stick to the five colors that you selected, but we'll just rotate the colors randomly. Say that you really like this one, but you wish the, um, the yellow is a little brighter. You can just click on this yellow and then um, tweak it that way. You should be able to see the live update. Once you're happy with your result, you can go ahead and click on OK. And as soon as you click on Yes, you, will, you should have a new pattern added to your swatch that has the new, um, that has the new color combination. All right. Do we have any questions? If not, I'll just move um, on. Give me one second. Do you design in RGB or CMYK colors? I do design in RGB, um, especially, I think it's compatible to spoon flower printing. Um, it's more vibrant, um, unless somebody require you, 
do um, CMYK. I always do RGB because it's just more vibrant. Um, There's also some scale questions on how to figure out scale when creating repeating patterns. Mm -hmm. um, some people are feeling confused with how this tiny rectangle is going to actually fill a yard of fabric. Yep, that makes perfect sense. Let's go back to this. Um, so um, I don't know if you have the ruler up here on top, the, the one with the small numbers. I When I try to decide the scale, I'm going to right click and change it to inches or centimeters, um, however you want. And then you can see um, the estimate of your of your your fabric size, for example, and let me just show you real quick. I think the spoon flower swatch is eight inches by eight inches. Is yep. that correct? Yep. Right. Um, I'll do eight by eight just to give myself a frame. So if you if I were to print my pattern on the swatch, it's going to look rough, roughly like this. Um, OK, I'm going to use a different pattern. So um, if I want to print it a bit smaller, say that I want to make a quilt out of this and this look too giant, what I usually do is to right click and transform and then scale, uncheck the transform object, scale it, um, keeping in mind this is an eight by eight. So say that I like this smaller scale a lot better. So I'm going to click on OK. So what I will do is to grab my pattern and then drag it to my canvas and click on E on your keyboard for free transform, or it looks like this, um, free transform tool. Grab one of the corners and hold shift to make it smaller, to roughly um, fit, roughly match my target size. If you want it super exact, you can compare this against uh, the ruler. But normally, um, I don't need to make everything super exact. So and then I will make this a pattern block and export it as 150 DPI. Speaking of export, let's see how we do that. So I'm just going to um, make this a bit bigger so we can all see. So right now um, I'm gonna switch to the I'm gonna switch to the outline mode so you can only see the outline and not be confused about all the boundaries. So um, let me grab my reference. It's always helpful to keep these in mind when we export. All right, so right now we have the motifs on top and we have our background layer. But if you notice that my background layer is way bigger than my sandbox definition, um, it's no problem because um, I do this intentionally because sometimes when you make the sandbox and the background layer the same size, you will get like this weird line when fabric gets print out. So I make my background layer way bigger to kind of cover the potential like illustrator bug <laughs> to um, so it, it won't have the weird white line. So um, right now everything is grouped as one. So I'm going to ungroup it by command shift G. So what I normally do is to lock my background layer so um, I can freely select my boundary, uh, my um, sandbox layer. So command two to lock this guy and then command Y so I can see my boundary. So I wanna make sure I select only this boundary and then this, there's a lot of shortcut. I'm gonna slow down. So shift O to bring your artboards. So what we're gonna do next 
is to make an artboard out of this guy. So when you click on Shift O, your cursor will change to this kind of cross shaped. You just click on this boundary and this will turn this boundary into an artboard. So all you need to do is to export this artboard, which in my case is um, the number 10 artboard. I'm going to click out of it and then command Y so I can see everything. You can see we just made an artboard out of our sandbox layer, the no stroke, no fill. So when you export, um, you want to click on file on the upper left hand corner and then export and export as and choose your place. Um, we want to use the artboards and we want to select the exact number. If you have multiple, you can separate them with commas, but I'm just going to do 10 because we have only one and export it. So Spoonflower asks for 150 PPI and we want to art optimized. Um, this is not super relevant. I will go with white or transparent either way. It's fine because we already have a background color and then just click on OK. So that's how you export it. Um, I've done this exact process uh, a few days ago and I ordered my sample. And this is what came back. Um, it's a lot smaller than what we're seeing on screen right now. And I ordered this as a fat quarter to make a little um, travel bag for myself. Um, I've also provided a template for you guys. So this last one here is the template for a fat, to print a fat quarter. So if you were, I know many of you guys probably sew. Um, I have a sewing machine somewhere in the back. Um, if you just click on one of the color blocks and um, click on your pattern, the pattern you just made and print this as um, fat quarter and print it out from um, spoon flour, you should be able to have um, something that you can cut it out and you can sew as um, one of those baggies. Um, this is not my design, but um, this is what you can do ultimately is to make yourself a little travel sized little organizer to put in in your carry on. So this is super fun. Yeah, that's the process. Okay, so that was amazing. Um, I've been trying to keep up with the Q and A and the chat and the duh. So if anybody has a question that was not answered, could you go ahead and pop it in the chat right now with a, a capital Q? Just so um, if you have any technical questions for Esther or any other questions for Esther. All right, Esther, Crystal has a question about what your opinion is on the pattern tool in Illustrator. Oh, I'm so glad you asked. I love pattern tool. I just really love, love, love. Um, what I use pattern tool the most is when I make a more complex pattern. For example, um, I'm just going to quickly demonstrate um, how I normally use it. So remember, we have to do like a several different versions, um, say that se several different versions for the composition. So we change a little bit and we drag it to the um, swatches and then we test it out with the pattern tool. You can actually um, see everything on the fly, but it does require some, um, a few extra steps, which I cover in my Scotiaire classes. It might be too long for a um, webinar for beginners, but um, I love pattern tool. Um, I'm just going to show you some example real quick. Say that my, um, my group of things are much more complex. Um, something like this. I'm going to select it all um, and then come over to object and pattern and make. So what this one gives, I'm going to zoom out by pressing command minus. 
So this one allow me to see how my composition looks like in a bigger view. So I'm gonna um, change my copy to nine by nine. So you can almost preview what this looks like on the fabric. Um, so you can duplicate stuff, um, fill in the holes, um, change colors on the fly, um, for example, like this, and then rotate it. Um, what I really love about this tool is that it gives you different tiling up op, um, options. For example, right now we're just doing a regular grid. You can do um, break by row, which also give you a finer option under break by row. Um, my favorite one is the hex by column or hex by row, which is one of them. Um, you may surprise you may surprise you at the beginning. Um, so all you need to do is to kind of um, maybe extend this a little bit bigger, 10 by 10. So this will allow you to come up with um, much more complex um, pattern composition without having to test it um, many, many times. So right now I'm just seeing everything on the fly. Say that I really like this one and I'm gonna save it. You can just click on done and it's over there already. But what's tricky is that you will need to um, kind of patternize this new pattern. Um, if you export it, um, oh, sorry. What I did is to click on the new pattern and just drag it to my artboard. So this one gave you a definition, um, kind of like what we talked about um, with the sandbox, but um, you will need to add Oops, I'm gonna turn off my ruler. So you will need to ungroup it and add a background layer and then export and turn this into um, an artboard and just export this part. But yeah, it's a little, um, it's a little, a little bit too informative for uh, a beginner, but um, yeah, I cover it in detail in my um, Skillshare class. You're muted, Tara. I'm muted. <laughs> so there have been several questions about 150 DPI versus mm -hmm. 300 DPI um, that I kind of want to address really quick. Um, industry standard is 300 DPI for, for print, right? So that's what most illustrators and designers are used to. But with spoon flower and fabric and printing on fabric, we only require 150 DPI. So that's yeah so that's 150 dpi and it's i mean you can't really see what it's crisp and it's clear so don't worry about that and if you it, it really helps you with like the sizing of your image too so if you upload at 12 inches by 12 inches at 150 dpi when you upload that to spoonflower you will get a 12 inch by 12 inch repeat if that makes sense if you upload you can upload at 300 dpi but if you do that your uh your swatch will be double the size does that make sense, Esther, what I'm saying? Yep, yep, um, exactly. And what I normally do is to make a pattern that is way bigger than I wanted. And then just um, on when you, after you upload your pattern, you have the option to size it smaller. You can always right. size it smaller. Um, and then once you're happy with the new scale, you can save that layout just on Spoonflower website. And if you wanna like sell multiple version of your pattern, you can sell maybe like upload the biggest that you have and then um, upload additional two copies for medium size and smaller scale. So that's always an option. And sometimes um, people will request, can you rotate it 90 degree, um, which is a, like it just help you to monetize one pattern with different options for different applications, I guess. Um, okay, so Lori Rudolph is asking, do you ever use the transform panel in Illustrator to make your duplicate motifs on the X and Y axis versus using the move tool? Mm, I just get used to using the move tool. Um, I guess I, I, what you're talking about is, um, let's see, let me just go back to here. Say that you make a rectangle here, right? And then, you can use the transform. So what this one does is that you can define 
the exact width and height with the definition, uh, with your target goal. Say we want this to be eight inches by eight inches. You can always do that. I, it's a, just a matter of preference. In Illustrator, there are always more than one thing, um, always more than one way to do the same thing. So um, if you find yourself always creating like the same repeating size, you can even turn the move into an action. Um, you can record it as an action. So every time you want to apply, you just click on window and then actions, it will move it for you. Yeah, for example, I'll just give you a quick example. Um, I have a dot here, and this is one of the actions that I saved. I can just hit one play button, and it will just make six times to the right with 100 pixels in between. So whenever you do things multiple times, like on a regular basis, you can always record it as an action. All right, so someone had a question super early on. Um, they use Procreate mm -hmm. largely, but they wanna make their patterns for their spoon flower shop in Illustrator. Um, uh -huh. Their question is they use a lot, of, a lot of brushes and texture to create their artwork in Procreate and they're yep. worried about digitizing them yep. um, uh, in Illustrator. Um, yeah. Yep, great question. Um, I use Procreate all the time. Um, I mostly do my drawing in Procreate. So my recommendation is that um, really um, take advantage of the layering. So like organize your motifs with layers and then bring them back layer by layer. So instead of um, digitizing the whole image, uh, which kind of sometimes can overwhelm Illustrator, you do it layer by layer and kind of reconstruct your final artwork that way. So um, just the same way that we did at the beginning um, when we did Im image trace. But sometimes if you, you like use super light colors, like say like super light yellow and, and the image trace doesn't really pick up that color, you can always um, color it black. And then what this one does is that it will give um, Illustrator more contrast. So the image trace can pick up the boundary better. And once it digitizes the shape itself, you can recolor it back to your original color. So just remember like do layers and implement the um, digitize them layer by layer. Um, and then if the result is still, if the result is still not ideal, you can, color them black and then digitize it or recolor it later. Um, Therese is asking a question. I'm not sure if I quite understand it. It says, do you need to bring the Procreate into Illustrator to submit? Are you, um, are you asking sure. about like how to import it? Maybe. I, yeah. What I do, well, different designer do it differently. What I do is that um, I would batch export, I would turn off the background color. So everything is transparent in Procreate. And then when you hit export. Um, oh, to spoon flower. She's asking how oh, to, to spoon flower. Spoon flower. Um, so thank you, Teresa, for um, clarifying. Um, um, if you already build um, a Procreate image, uh, if it's already repeating, you can just um, upload that image as a JPEG onto Spoonflower, if, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To follow up. Yeah. Um, someone was also asking, I don't know if you're up for this, but someone was um, hoping that to see you doing some freehand drawing with your mouse, some flowers, you could totally say no. That's that's a that's a difficult. Um, Stephanie. Yeah. Um, what I normally do is I actually draw in Procreate and use my texture brushes and yeah. then digitize them here. Um, and this is not like the best drawing tool, but it's possible. Some people I've seen some people are super good at it. Um, so it's maybe just a matter of practice. Yeah, my my wrist doesn't want to. I don't know. I get like that little monkey paw. Like if uh -huh. you're the same action over and over. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, okay, I'm so sorry if I've missed anyone's questions. Um, 
Can you show how you made the circles into an action? Oh, how do I make circle? Okay, I will show you something real quick. Yeah, this is my next Skillshare class actually. Um, so I'm pressing L on my keyboard to draw one circle. And what I do is to go to window and click on actions until you, um, I'm gonna um, collapse this and tell Illustrator I'm gonna make an action. You can just hit um, create a new action, which is the little plus icon and say uh, test. You can set color, oh, sorry, you can set folder and give it a color um, and then hit record. And then I'm gonna do transform move Say that I want to move horizontal um, 100 pixels and then vertical zero and distance zero. Oh, distance, um, leave it as it is and click on, uh, click on copy. And then command D, which is repeating what I just made before a few times. And then once I'm happy with this, I will just Kit, uh, click on um, stop playing. And then you can do that by, um, and you can do the same thing and just click on the test and play. It will do, it will repeat the same thing for you. Also in my Skillshare class, um, it tells, um, it shows you how to turn the repeating thing into a action. So if you find yourself making, um, similar sizes all the time. This is a this is a time saver. I don't know if we have time for another a couple of questions, but this one kept popping up from someone and I, I kept missing it. Um, Sherry's question is, is there a secret to doing polka dots, stripes or vertical lines? Um, can you clarify what do you mean by secret? <laughs> Are you talking about repeating patterns, Sherry? Like how to create like a yes to do a repeat pattern. Um, polka dot repeat pattern is pretty easy. So you just have a what if you are talking about just like one dot and then create a um, boundary in the back and then maybe add a background layer and then it's a it's a pattern. And for stripes, um, it's similar. It's basically a rectangle. Whoops. It's basically a rectangle um, color with um, with a sandbox at the bottom. You can add a background layer as well, background color layer if you want. So this is a pattern. This is a stripe already. Um, um, by secret, I, I, I'm not sure if I understand correctly, but if you want to make this uh, more organic, you can um, draw a line with an um, actual maybe brush pen. On, on your paper and then just digitize that and then make pattern out of this. Um, for example, I just drew a line like this. You can see it has a lot more texture. So when you make a pattern out of um, a very organic brush stroke, um, your stripe is gonna, your stripe pattern is going to have that much character and personality. So experiment your brush marks and play really and digitize it and see what you can come up with. Well, I hope that answered your question, Sherry. Um, this was really great. I really wanna thank the community also for asking amazing questions and honestly answering each other's questions and helping each other out. It is such an amazing community. And Esther, you did such a good job. I want you all to know that this was recorded um, we are going to put it on the blog next week when they're all ready to go. So like the symposium link that you found to register for all of these classes will update with these live links for you to replay over and over again. And also I'm going to send the link that Esther created for you all one last time in case anybody missed it. She has her templates there, color palette inspiration, links to her Skillshare classes. She has just went above and beyond here. So. Thank you, Esther. Thank you, everyone. Thank you Sorry so much. Sorry if I didn't get your questions. You guys are amazing. That's it. Yay. Bye, friends. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.